Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, today uh, we will be discussing about transform of sizing. Uh, I think uh, we have discussed about this topic. Okay, so if you remember uh, in our first video, we have discussed about the transform specifications. Okay, so today we will discuss about transform related that is how we can size the transformer. Okay, so the, today's topic is how to do transform sizing. Okay, so when we call the transform sizing means we have to size the transformer. So let's see what are the factors basically to size the transformer. Okay, so let's understand there are almost there are four to five factors are there to size the transformer. First, let's see here it is a load list. So this is the load list. This we require. Okay. Second is your absorb factor. Third is your power factor. Fourth is your efficiency. Fifth is your future margin. And sixth is your contingency factor. So these are almost six factors. Okay. These are the six factors we have to consider while doing a transformer sizing. Okay. Let's see one by one. Now, what is the load list? Okay. Load list is nothing but the list of all the loads. List of all the loads that is motor loads and the non motor loads. Okay, when we say about motor loads, motor loads means all the induction motor loads. Normally, in a plant, you know, this, normally all are 250 motors or 500 motors, 400 motors, they're all loaded. Okay, so whatever motors have been connected on the system, all that motors will be coming under motor load list. Okay, and normally in a plant, they're all induction motors. Hardly there may be a synchronous motor, but normally synchronous motor is connected on the HV side. So we are talking about the loads which are connected on the LV side. Okay. So this comes under the motor load details. Second types of loads are your non-motor loads. So non-motor loads means which loads like lighting loads, any kind of critical lighting or any emergency lighting load or any exit light loads or we can say any welding socket. So any kind of loads where motor is not involved. So that loads come under non-motor loads. And remember, in a plant, the major loads, 80 to 90% of the loads constitutes your motor load list. Okay. So we'll focus on the motor loads in this load list. Okay. So now what is the load list? Load list consists of your motor loads and non-motor loads. Now let's see how we are going to segregate the load list. The load list is segregated into parts like continuous loads. Okay, then there are second types of loads like intermittent loads. Okay, and third is your standby loads. Okay, so what are continuous loads? Continuous loads are the loads which are running continuously. For example, a conveyor motor, which we, we keep on running continuously. There won't be any stop. So it requires continuous uh, power supply. You can say continuous power supply is the motor will keep on running continuous as per the process requirement. Second load is the intermittent loads. So what are the intermittent loads? Loads which will run for some specific period of time. It won't run continuous. For example, you can say some intermittent pumps are there or there are crane motors are there. Okay. In a workshop, we will not run the crane for a continuous time. Whenever we require that only the crane motor will run. Then there are something, any critical kind of pumps uh, or walls are there which will run on a specific period of time. Even you can take an example of a welding socket. Welding socket is connected to your socket loads, okay, on a socket, power socket. So we can't connect the power socket every time 24 by 7. So only specific period of time only the power socket will be loaded. So these loads are come under the intermittent load, okay. And the rest load is your standby load. Standby loads means you have a system, you know, uh, in a plant there is a one working motor is there and one standby motor is there okay means whenever there is a fault in this uh, working motor if there is a maintenance in the working motor standby motor comes into the picture okay so these are the motors come under the standby loads so we will consider one by one so these are the loads which will constitute your load list okay Now just see what are the other factors to be considered in the motor lead, motor list. So once you have the kilowatt ready, okay. Let's take one example. You are having a motor of hundred kilowatt, okay. 
This is a kilowatt. You are having a motor of 100 kilowatt. So second factor we have to consider is the absorb factor. Now what is the absorb factor? Absorb factor is nothing but your <coughs> your load factor. <coughs> which comes around 0.7 to 0.8 okay so second factor is your load factor or we can call it the absorb factor okay so the normal value of the absorb factor is 0.7 or 0.8 or 0.65 or 0.7 also so what is this basically when your motor is connected okay see this is your motor so this if it is in 100 kilowatt of motor this is called as the connected load okay this is your connected load the motor, the transformer won't going to feed this 100 kilowatt. Okay, the actual load is the absorb absorb load. So what is the absorb load? When we consider this 100 kilowatt and you multiply by 0 0.7, this 0.7 is the absorb factor, or we can say as a load factor also. This would be 0.7 or it will be 0.75 also. You will get 70 kilowatt. This 70 kilowatt is your absorb load. Okay, so this absorb factor, when you multiply with 100 kilowatt, you will get this absorb load. So the moment you get the absorb load, this is the absorb load. Okay, you have to multiply this absorb load. Sorry, not multiply, you have to divide this by power factor. Okay, what is power factor? This power factor you are going to get it from the motor catalog. So this 70 divided by normally power, power factor is 0.8 or 0.85 something you can write here 0.8 or 0.85 okay so this value you may get around 85 kilowatt okay so once you get the uh, after dividing by power factor you get some value and this value again you have to divide by efficiency again efficiency you will make it about 0.9 or you can get or 0.95 okay so even these values, you are going to get it from the motor catalog. Like if you divide by efficiency, you will get some value like something 95 kilowatt. Okay. So once you divide by power factor, normally you will get this value by in terms of KVA. Sorry, not in kilowatt, you will get the value in terms of KVA. So once we got this KVA, we divide this KVA by your efficiency, you are going to get once you divide by 0.95, sorry, point this 85. When you divide by 0.95, you will get something 95 kVA. This is your input kVA. Okay. Once we divide this 85 kVA by 0.95, that is the efficiency, you will get the input kVA. For every motor's loads, this input kVA we have to calculate it. Okay. And we have to consider all this input kVA into your load list. Okay, so let's see and just how to prepare a load list once again. <clears throat> you have to segregate all the loads that is, continuous load, intermittent load, and the standby load. Okay, so once you calculate that is 95 kVA. For every motors, you will get these loads. Then in intermittent load, there will be some kind of load like there will be 100 kilowatt or 50 kVA, 75 kVA. So all these loads, you have to consider 30% of your intermittent load. And here you will going, going to get something like again 100, 50, any value, 25. So you have to consider 10% of this standby load. Okay, this value you have to consider 100%, 100% of the continuous loads, okay. So the thermal load is, you have to consider 100% of the continuous load plus 30% of the intermittent load and or the highest intermittent load, any, any value, 30% of the total intermittent load or any the highest intermittent load, whichever value is higher, you have to consider that. And last is your standby load, so 10% of the standby load or any highest standby load, whichever higher value is, you have to consider that. So th this is the basic thermal load formula. I will just write it here.
See basic thumb rule formula for transformer sizing is 100% continuous plus 30% intermittent plus 10% standby. Okay. So this is a formula for a transformer sizing. So let's say you have got a value of let's say 800 kV. Okay. You have got value is 800 kV. Once you received this value, you have to consider some future margin. Okay. Normally future margin we have to consider 20%. Or we can consider 25% also, 20% or 25%. It depends from client to client. Some clients may ask you for 20%. Normal thumb rule is for 20%. So once we multiply by 800 kV into for future margin 20% load we have considered. And for contingency load. What is this contingency factor? This is the uh, for the loads which can come sudden rise. Uh, any load can increase in, in sudden value. So to consider that margin the 10% of contingency factor is considered ok so you have to multiply 800 into 1.2 into 1.1 so overall if you see you are multiplying this input kva by 30% rise 20% plus 10% so it depends on the client to client we can consider here even 10% of the future margin also ok it could be 15% also over here so overall rise could be 20% to 25% or maximum is 30% you have to consider based on your whatever rating you have got from the load list so this may come around let's say uh, something 30% is uh, you have got something like 1170 value I don't know the exact value which you can just calculate it let's say 1170 kV you have got ok so nearest transformer rating for 1170 is your 1250 kV ok so this is your recommended nearest standard rating you have to always recommend a standard rating so whatever standard rating you are available near to this value okay we have, we have to recommend it for example if i have got a value of let's say 1500 here 1500 okay 1540 kv if i have got so what is the standard formula uh, rating i would have recommended it is 1600 kv because these are the standard values 1250 kva 1600 kva 1600 or we can say 2000 kva 2500 kva so these are the values we normally recommend it okay so this is how you have to recommend to the uh, client that this is your standard value which you can consider for the transform sizing okay and now there is one more factor last factor you have to consider that is your what is the highest rated motor let's understand this is your transformer okay you are feeding and there are a lot of motors are there here okay we have almost let's say we have 400 to 500 motors are there okay so we have to calculate understand which is the highest rated motor let's say 132 kilowatt okay 132 okay so let's say we have a highest rated motor that is 132 kilowatt so we have to see how we can start this? Can we start this highest rated motor keeping all the base load on? See, this is your base load. Base load means total load. From total load, you have to sub minus your highest rated motor. Keeping this highest rated motor on, we have to ensure we are we are keeping this base load on, and we have to ensure that we can we start this highest rated motor. Okay. So if we can start highest rated motor on this transformer, then we can recommend that rating, whatever we have calculated. Like. 1250 kVA okay because for a highest rated motor the starting peak of the current is very high it is almost six to seven times of a full load current so we have to ensure whether that can be that the transformer can capable has the capability to withstand that load so if it can start that motor then yes we can recommend it if the starting kVA is getting very high about this then we have to increase this rating also we can go for next highest rating 600 kVA okay so this is how we have to transform do the transform sizing okay now if you have any doubts you can just comment and you can ask me i can make a video on that also or and there are a lot of interview set of questions also which i will post in my coming upcoming videos okay so keep watching keep subscribing me okay and if you have any doubts you can ask me and keep watching the video that's it thank you for today